All right, well, you know, I'll, I'll start off, uh, you know, first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, I'll get through the injuries first, update everybody on that. Uh, Evgeny Dadnoff, he had a grade two MCL strain, would have been out four to, still is out four to six weeks from the start when it happened. So doubtful he would have been back. He wouldn't have been, he wasn't going to come back for the uh, third round. If we made it to the finals, probably wouldn't have played either. So we, we'd lost him. That was a major blow for us. Yanni Hockenpah, he's having off-season uh, knee surgery. He's got to clean up his knee. Had some issues with that. And then he was dealing with a, uh, a back injury during the playoffs. Uh, that was really hampering and stuff. We had numerous guys out with back injuries, rib injuries. They were always game-by-game -game decisions. You're in the third round of the playoffs. A lot, a lot of guys banged up. That's going to happen. And it's no different than the team still playing. Um, that's the injuries. Uh, so I'm open to questions and fire away. Was there anything that Jake was dealing with? He, he, mentioned? he, he was he, uh, dealing up. He was banged up. You know, everybody's banged up. You you, you go through a two game schedule and another 20 plus games. It's, everybody was banged up, but uh, you find ways to play. But nothing serious, nothing that needs surgery. A lot, a lot of injuries that just need two to three weeks to heal up. And the back injuries for other players, any concern for any of those? No, no nothing long-term. Once again, two, three weeks, uh, they're checking with their medical people and they should be fine in the next two, three weeks. No surgeries? No surgeries. No, no, no other surgeries. No. You draw things up on paper in the off-season, you hope. How did you like how this thing turned out so far well, in one year? In yeah, no, it's, hey, we had a good season, you know. I'll go through the stats here with you later on, but uh, it was a good season. Uh, now the goal is we got to hopefully you try to get better. Uh, you do that through internal, internally you hope that happens, and through some, maybe some free agency, maybe some, maybe some trades, we'll see where it goes. Why did it work? It seems like Pete understood when he came in that he wanted to, I mean, because you guys had numbers that were both great offensively and defensively, and that's the first time in a while that's, yeah. you know, been that good. Well, first of all, you got to give, uh, you know, I, I give compliments to the coaches. They did a great job. The coaching staff did a great job. They uh, brought the team together. They played the way we wanted to play. I like how they took care of, you know, there's always going to be situations that arise during the season. They took care of those situations. Uh, they didn't fester. I thought they did a great job of managing the room. Um, I told the players at year end, uh, when we, I met with them in this, this room here, I, I told them, I said, you know what, I've been around a long time. And every night that we played, I felt like we had a chance to win. That doesn't mean you're going to win every night, but I felt we had a, a chance to win. We had good goaltending, we had good structure, team structure. Uh, we could score, we could come from behind. Uh, we defended well, power play was good, PK was good. Uh, I really felt every night I went to a game, I set up in the press box where you guys sit. Uh, I was comfortable in knowing that we had a chance to win, and that doesn't happen very often now. And it doesn't mean you win every night, and we didn't win all the way to the end, but you felt like you had a chance every night, and that's all you can ask for. And that's a compliment to the coaches, uh, what they put in place, and then the other part is the players uh, understanding how they had to play, being prepared, and playing up to their expectations. With the, with the season Jamie Benn had, do you feel like that's sustainable, or and if so, why, why is that? So, I mean, he wasn't that way for like four or five years before that. What changed and can he keep it up? Well, I need to compliment Jamie Ben. He changed his, I've talked about this before, he changed his training. Uh, he's got lighter. He understood the game's got a lot quicker. And so he changed his training habits. He took it upon himself. So a compliment to him. I think he took it upon himself. I think Wyatt Johnson was a big part of that. I think it rejuvenated him. He loved playing with the young, younger player. Uh, I think we managed his minutes better. With, with Pete's system, every you know, the forwards, they all play 12 to 16 minutes. We don't have anybody that's pushing that 20-minute mark. And I think that's important. It's about four lines. And I think that's important. And it paid off for our players individually and as a team. Where do you think you'd like to improve to take that next step? Final four, obviously, is, is pretty impressive. But just to get one step further, where do you want to improve? Well, I think we need to improve everywhere. You're always trying to get better. I think we can have a little bit more depth scoring. Um, I think defense, we can be better. I even think we can be better goaltending wise. I, you know, I think this was a big year for Jay Godinger. He's never really been a true number one the whole year. Uh, and he became that, and there's ups and downs to go with that. And same with the playoffs. You know, his coming out party was against Calgary two years ago, and that was one round. All of a sudden, now you hit two rounds, three rounds. And it's, a, it's a different learning thing, and he, and he learned that. And then he knows that, and he's going to be a better goalie for it 
we forget how young some of these guys are. This is their first year experience. You know, the, the Robertsons, even Miro and uh, Jake Ottinger, this is the first kick of the can. And there's a lot that you, you go through. You, it's the mental preparation, the grind of the playoffs. You're spent and, uh, you know, it's the travel involved. And uh, yeah, But you have to go through it to live it, to learn it, and to get better. So, you know, I think our depth scoring can be better. Um, I think get better defensively, uh, get better everywhere. Because you, we, we, hey, we're two, two wins from being in the finals, and from there, who knows what happens, but we want to get there. And we want to sustain it. That's, that's the biggest thing. On Jake, uh, any concern about him playing 81 games more than anybody in the NHL? Is that something that you want to manage better in the future? Well, I, you manage it, but it's a good thing. That means you went a long ways in the playoffs. Most goalies are going to play 50, 60 games, and you had another 20, you're up to 80. That's part of the, that's, that's what I just talked about. That's part of the learning process. You have to go through it to manage it. Unfortunately, we had an injury to Wedgwood, which kind of, you know, we would probably like to take five, eight games off of that. But you're still as an number one goalie, you're going to play 80 plus games if you're going to go the whole way. And, uh, you know, it's been a little bit different. You look at the teams that are playing right now, uh, they had a whole bunch of injuries, so their goalies have played less. Uh, but, but most of the time, you're going to get a goalie if you're going to the playoffs. You look at Vasilevsky over the years, the teams that won it, they're playing 80 games. And that's something he's going to have to, have to manage. Jim, we've seen you sign Chris McKenzie, Alex Petrovic for the AHL. How young is this team going to be? You've got a lot of prospects pushing up. What, compared to last year, what do you see for the development of this organization? Well, I think you know, we have young players coming in. Now they're going to have to, they're going to earn it. They're not giving their spots. That's why we've signed the McKenzie and Petrovics. We know we're going to be we're going to be a kitty core down below. It's going to be a young team, and uh, which is good. Uh, it's a good thing to have. But we want to have the right people in place, and we hope those players are going to come up and push these players here that are up in the NHL pushing for spots. And uh, we're going to build our team up with the most depth we can. Let's see where these young kids are at and see where their games are at. Sticking with the AHL, how do you view your third goalie situation right now? Because you mentioned the Wedgwood injury, obviously yep. from last yep. year. Yeah, you know, Matt Murray, uh, we've got him, we got Poirier coming up. Poirier's really having a good year. Actually, Poirier's still playing. He played last, I think it was last night or the night before. Idaho's playing Florida, so hard to believe they're still playing. And uh, he played the other night, lost in a one nothing game. He's got a lot of upside coming up. we got Matt Murray. Would you like to have another depth guy? You might. We just don't know what's out there. That's the problem. It's, uh, you know, in the past, we had, you know, we had Anton Kadobin there for a while. Unfortunately, he got injured. Uh, if he wasn't injured, he was probably coming up, so couldn't use him. So, would you like to have another guy? We're going to look at that, but uh, like I said, it's it's kind of a little bit of the system the way it is, and uh, you kind of deal with those things as they come along. Max Domi mentioned that term is something that he's going to be looking for in his next contract, given his journey so far, which has been a lot of stops. What what is your level of interest in re-signing him, and what where, where does it go from here? Well, I thought Max came and did a great job for us. Uh, got to know him as a person, which was important. I think he was a great fit for us. We loved him. We're going to talk to his agency. We can get something done. Uh, we are dealing in a flat cap world. We'll see where that goes. Uh, but uh, you know, I talked to him. He's he's going to look after himself too. And, and we got to run our business also. But great fit for us. I'd love to be able to bring him back if we can. And what about Dadunov? Um, obviously, a little older um, and everything like that. Does that? help maybe for you guys in terms of what the price could be and, and, and what's his level of interest you know he's had success with pete yeah. so. he also wants to come back all the guys we brought in all wanted to come back they loved it here they all told me that it's one of the best we had a tight group of players uh, you talked you guys have talked to the players we had a tight group of players here that uh they it was a tight dress room the players that came in loved it here they loved the organization how we operate uh they'd all love to come back now we need to figure out the dollar figures if we can make that work with also with those players, how much do you consider the players that you have coming up and um, you know their contract situations, but also like not wanting to stop the progress if if, that, if they have earned a spot, you know, somewhere on the line. That's what we got to balance. That's that's what we got to figure out. Uh, good problem to have if you got too many good players. Mm -hmm. I'll take that any day. We'll figure out the rosters we go. You know, something that we we forget about this year. We didn't have a lot of injuries. I, I was shocked that we didn't go into any games where I thought we were going to have to play with maybe 16, 17 players. You know, there's a rule in place where you have to play less than one or two players that you can add a player at a certain level and a certain price. I was shocked we never had to do that because we're up, we're nubbing the cap the whole year 
and I was shocked we didn't do that. We didn't have a lot of injuries. And uh, now we're prepared for that. I got to make sure again this year we're prepared for that because I don't know if we'll live through that that way again. Who knows? I hope we do, but we got to make sure we're covered that way. Talk about development, Liam Pixel. Do you have any thoughts of? Is there any firm plans on whether he can come over, or is it playing in the Swedish league a good thing at his stage? Where's he at, and is he recovering yet? Yeah, he were, right. as everybody knows, he was uh, Liam was on the Swiss national team for the World Championships. He was playing great. We we're watching him. He made the team, and unfortunately, to the game before the World Championships started, he broke his ankle. He's coming over to development camp. The plan is we're going to take a look at him. The plan is to get him over to North America. Get playing now let's wait and see how he's where is he at in his rehab and his injury see where that's at but we would like to get him familiar with uh with north american hockey get him over here he's going to come to development camp and uh we think he's ready for that next step now I just want to see where the injury's at but if you're a young guy if you're you know we saw him in the world juniors he was an impactful player there and but if you're a young guy if you're 19 years old and you're starting to play in the world championships he was in our top four or five defensemen. You're, you're getting pretty close to coming to North America. So speaking, we're excited. Speaking of defensemen, with Nils Lundqvist, obviously he got past the waiver exemption, so you couldn't send him down to play. Um, he seemed pretty enthusiastic still about the future. I know he's not a short-term project. You know, got him for the long haul. How do you feel about where he's going? We thought he, I know everybody's disappointed in play. He, he played 60 games this year. Ended up being the, he's the top rookie defenseman goal scoring uh, in the league, he you know what is his first year in the league. He had a good year. This was a good learning step for him, and uh, he knows what he's got to go work on. He was going to be the next man up if we got a couple of injuries. He knew that. He worked hard. He's very upbeat, and uh, we're looking forward to his future with us. Which Jim, you've got depth guys coming up. You've got your core here. You've got your coaching staff in place. What does the future hold for the GM? <laughs> Back at it. It's uh, it's June. I, we just finished our amateur meetings. We got the combine going up in Buffalo right now. I got the pros coming in next week. Then we're at the draft, and then we got development camp and then free agency. So it's it's a good problem to have. Where uh, when you when you play close to June first, something good's going on. So so we're excited and we'll go from there. Do you right. want to be here long term? Well, no, I'd like to. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to. I got a year left, and uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to ownership yet. It's been kind of a whirlwind, so I'll talk to them. But uh, I'd love to be here for a few more years. Yes. Uh, with Vegas, obviously, they have one of the deepest defensive core. Were, were you were you surprised at how how much did they kind of had the edge in that matchup between the defensive groups? No, no, we knew we knew that they you know they that's probably the best defense group in the league. And then that's showing. And it's not as showing against us. It's showing against, you know, some pretty good teams and showing against now. Um, we thought we had the edge in other areas. Um, I looked at that series. Game one was very close, but give the edge to them. Game two, I thought was our, we were the better team. Game through three, that was a terrible game for us. They were the better team. Game four and five, I thought we were better. I thought they game six. They won the one game we were better in overtime. That was the difference in the series. And uh, other than that, I thought it was a, no, there was a couple blow games, but other than that, I thought the games were close as far as who was going to win and lose. We were right there. I give them their, you know what? First of all, I, I acknowledge they got a good team. They've done a good job. Um, and I thought some of the areas we might have an advantage didn't, you know, I thought goaltending we might get him. Let's give uh, Mr. Hill a little credit. He played outstanding and he still continues to. So good team. Went six games, probably could have gone seven, a little bit break here or there, you know. But there's things to learn in this too. I talked to the team. You know, when you talk, you know, we went through a tough first and second round, and that catches up to you. You know, they Vegas took care of business early with Winnipeg and didn't go too long with Edmonton. You start getting into the third round, end of the third round, and then get to the finals, it's 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 a war of attrition. And uh I think that came into play a little bit. I, I really think the Seattle series, they took us to the limit. They took us to the limit, and I think that caught up to us a little bit at the end. It's going to happen. As a, as a GM, I, it was a few years ago you bought out Val Nishushkin. What goes into the mindset of when it's time for a buyout? And, you know, uh, and, and obviously that helped with bringing Joe in, but, you know, how, how, how do you measure that? Well, if you, you look at your team, you see what the market is, what's out there. You know, where we seen these. You guys have been watching yesterday. There were some signings yesterday. You start to get a feel for the market. You get a feel for what's out there. That's what you got to balance. Are there buyouts on the table for you this, this offseason? Right now, no, nothing. No, no, no plans right now. No. How do you assess your group of defensemen right now? 
All right, look at it and find out. out. Yeah, no, I uh, I think we got a pretty good group. You know, and it's funny. I know people are. You know, I, I read everything out there yeah. and stuff. And I, I do love too. It, you know, and I, uh, it's funny. We're we're third in the league in goals against, seventh in the league goals for, third in penalty killing in the league, fifth in power of play, first in playoff percentage, sixth in shorthanded goals for, fifth in shorthanded goals against, eighth in the league in points. So something went right. Something was good. Now, I think we're going to be even better. I think Thomas Harley wasn't here to start the year. He's now joined the group. Nils Lundqvist, I think, is going to be a better player. Let's go from there. Now, that, does that mean I'm just going to sit back and not do it? No, we're looking to get better all the time. If there's something out there that makes sense for us, uh, we'll make is it a signing. Is it a trade? We've got to figure that out. Did you learn something about your decor? You talked about regular season is one thing, but the way Seattle pushed and the way yeah. Vegas handled the defense. Did you learn something about your decor? Well, I think you're always learning uh, and in different situations. It, it was interesting. The Seattle series was a whole different series from Minnesota. Heavy, hard hockey. Uh, Seattle was all speed. And then uh, their biggest came back a little bit heavy, harder. They had the bigger forwards. They had big, big, strong forwards. So two different kind of two different sets of series and stuff, which was interesting to watch in that. Um, I thought, you know, we, we leaned heavy on some defensemen. I think we, you know, we talked, talked internally. Let's get the ice time down a little bit. I think we got to manage that a little bit more. You know, now that we've lived through going, a lot of guys have never lived this before. And you think, oh, it's no big deal. I can play. I'll go and go and go. Well, you find out it does catch up to you. And I think that caught up to us a little bit. I think we can manage the ice time a little better. We've discussed that internally. Uh, but you get in the problem is you get in the third round of the playoffs, the pressure to win there every night. When you got a guy like Merrill Haskin, it's hard not to put him in the ice all the time. He's that good. But those are things we're going to learn to manage. And I think those are things that players have learned themselves, how to manage things. With the uh, two guys, Jake and Jason, um, what did you make of their playoff runs? Jason had a couple of rounds where it took him a little bit, and then he looked like he came around in the Vegas series. Jake had a little bit of an up, way more up and down series than obviously last year, which was shorter. What did you make of their two playoff runs? Well, I, you know, I did good. Good discussion with Jason. What what he needs, and I think everybody needs to understand, when you go in the other team's dressing room and they got the lines up, and guess whose name's circled? He, he's a target now. And this is only his second real year in the league. And that's a different scenario. You gotta learn to go through that. And that's what he did. And I thought he did it. I you know, he had his ups and downs the first two series. All of a sudden, the third round, we saw the old Jason Rock. He started, it clicked in, he started to figure it out. And that's that's just a process. And if you look throughout the league, every series with younger players, they all went through it. It's the intensity goes up. You're now getting every night, you're getting the best matchups. You're getting the, the best defensemen against you every night, the best forwards against you. They're going to check you. And they got a plan against you. And you got to find a way to work through that. Jake, same thing. Jake had the series last, last year, was his first series against Calgary. Say we won that series and played against Edmonton, would he have been the same or not? Who knows? You, you got to live it. All of a sudden, now you go through one series, and now, you know, the attrition, I talked about that. Now you're a little bit more worn out and the pressure every night. You got to go through this stuff. So they, it's easy to say, well, they had ups and downs and stuff. Well, they did, but they had pretty good, like I said, anytime you get to the third round, you're two games to get in the final. Something's going right. And, Speaking of ups and downs, how would you assess Mason Marchman's season? A lot of ups and downs. I thought he was great. Uh, first three months was really good. And then uh, kind of hit a wall at certain times and then started to struggle in that. And that happened in the playoffs too. Some good moments and bad moments. This is new to him too. You know, and the other thing with, was I had a good talk to him. First year with a new team. It's a lot different. I think you guys saw that with Joe Pavelski. You know, that first year Joe... Uh, you guys were sitting there saying, is this it? Is this the end of them, I believe? And that, that's probably three, four years ago now. Were, everybody was saying, Ooh, is he at the end? And when you talk to these players that come in from new, different organizations, it takes a while. It just your new coaching staff, new city. Uh, if you're married and got kids in school, just little things that come into play. And uh, that's what I think Mason went through. He knows what he's going to work on. He's going to get better. Uh, he went through a lot of things personally. It was a tough year. We all know his his story, and it was a tough year for him that way. Can he be one of the solutions to the increased depth scoring that you mentioned you want to see? Yeah, no, I, I think he, that's why he was brought in. We wanted to add some size, uh, some grit, and scoring, and that's that's why we brought him in. So he's, he's a big part of that. With, with Wyatt Johnston, you guys 
you guys put it, let him play his natural position, played him with Jamie, um, all uh, housed him with Joe. Did the way that you guys handle Wyatt Johnston provide you a template for maybe Logan Stankoven, somebody who is coming from juniors to a lesser extent, Maverick? I know Maverick had a year in pro. Maybe more talking about Logan here. Just you know, did it provide you a template of how you would want to integrate a young player who's make, maybe making the jump straight from juniors to NHL? No, at any time, I don't know if it's a template, but any time we're going to bring a young player in like that, we're going to go through those same steps. Uh, that's just an automatic. We, we just know that it's a big step coming from junior. Big, big step. And uh, it doesn't matter. Three years ago, if we would have had something in that situation, we would have done the same thing. But it, it's important to put them in the right situation to have, have the most success without the pressures the everyday pressures are just living your life. We want to make them as comfortable as they can be and protect them the best we can. What did you see from Logan? It's funny, I talked to Pat Lee and you guys have three now, but he says he scored 100 points in junior hockey this season. You're a pretty darn good player. Yeah, something's going well. Uh, no, yeah. he, well, he won World Juniors. He's the Memorial Cup. He was a leading, like, was second in the league uh, scoring. Bedard was ahead of him and played more games. Uh, he, he's had a great, great career and a great season. You know, a little bit, a little bit like us. You get to the Memorial Cup and you don't win it. You, it's it's a funny. The farther you go, the more, the harder it is to lose, and the more critical people get. Yeah. And they forget about well, there's teams sitting out there that have and you make the playoffs. And, and it's a funny, funny how it is. You know, I always tell people. Uh, I still remember going back to my other organization. We had a good team, and the one year we lost, uh, lost in the first round. Everybody wanted to blow it up. The next year we lost the second round, and then the real pressure was to blow it up. And we stuck with it, and we won two cups afterwards. And so I guess my message is you got to be careful. It's easier to, to go backwards than it is to go forwards. So just be careful what you do, and that's the same thing with these young guys. We, we want to manage them the right way. Let's see where they're at. It's, you know, uh, you know as I talked about, the farther you go, the more criti critical you get. got to be careful. Logan Stanko had a great year, and uh, he's got a great future ahead of him. On that sticking with it, is you, you had mentioned during the year that you felt like you got over a hump of maybe having an older core and not having the next wave fully intact, and you feel like now you have three or four sort of lined up in that regard. So because of that, do you, are you more of a fine-tuning than a major change at this point? Uh, that's a great question. I, I would say we're more fine-tuning, but... We're always there, you know, it's my job to, to make us the best we can be. And if there's a situation that uh, we have an opportunity to make a big move that we think is going to make us better, we'll look into it. Uh, but we do have the core in place. We got, you know, it's, it's a fine balance. Like I, let's back up to February, whenever the March, the trade deadline was. Everybody's beating the drums, we got to add to it, you know, or, and you give up picks to do it. Well, in two weeks, I'm going to the draft. And I'm going to be sitting there, not doing much. We get no first, and no third, and da da da. And those days are hard, but we did it, so we can get better and get to this round. So it's a real balancing act. You really got to be careful with it. So, uh, you know, we all you want to be all in. You do, but you know, I was told you guys this before. My job is today, tomorrow, and ten years down the road too. And, and I want to be conscious of all that. This is the first time that you haven't had a first round pick since you've been here. I think, is that yeah, right? it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, how does that affect your approach? To that and maybe it's tied to free agency a little bit on what your mindset is. Yeah. Well, once again, I I look at my first round pick as Nils Lundqvist. If we walk away from the draft, you know, with the Nils Lundqvist, and what really made that one easier to, to take is he's he's already turning pro. Whoever I draft. If I, in two weeks, I go to Nashville and I drafted somebody, they're probably four years away. We had a chance to add a, a defenseman, right shot defenseman, that was already developed and turned pro right away. So that was an easier thing to do. But does it, you know, I guess we get back to your question. Does it make us look any different? Not really. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. In the end, we just got to fill in holes. The draft picks are more three, four years down the road now. And we got to watch, see what we do, and, and we got to be conscious of as we move forward to what other moves do we make that are going to affect us. Your defensive group is all under contract except for Joel Hanley, and you know he was more of the seventh role. Is that a good thing or a bad thing in terms of you know you want to? You said you want to upgrade, yeah, defenseman, but it, it's really hard to do with the contractual situations. How do you balance that? 
I think it's a good thing. Like as I said, I think we're third in the league goals against, so something's right. So that's a good thing. And you know, my job is to know the market and stuff. I, uh, I get a rough idea who the free agents are. And I don't see, right now, other than a trade, I don't see anybody out there in free agency that's going to take you from here to there. I, I don't see it. Plus, we are, unfortunately, got this cap world thing that drives you everybody crazy. We had to deal with that, too. It is, it's, it is there. It's, it's part of life. And so to say you're going to add a $7 million defenseman, not going to happen. Or anybody. Anywhere. <laughs> with, with Hanley, what's, uh, what's, what's the level of interest in bringing him back? We are we're having a proving these next week. Okay. Going to go through the organization, going to go through every other team, see where we're at. Uh, see where we're at, see what's out there, see what ideas we have, how can we continue to make the team better, and then we'll, that'll give me about two weeks to circle around back to agents and see what our next step is. What did Tyler show you this year? I mean, it's his first year really back, and then, um, you know, in the two stints that he had playing with the top line back in January and then in the first round, it looked like he, he played very well. Just what did you see from him? Well, I think, you know, I, think I met with Tyler. This is his first summer. We hasn't been dealing with something for the last two, three years. So I said, this is your chance now to take that next step. Uh, I thought he took a step this year. Um, it was interesting when he got hurt there for about two weeks. He was injured. And it's interesting when you lose somebody, how, you know, I go into the coaches room after games and say, boy, we kind of miss Tyler tonight. Like, it, it, you know, you look at everybody's faults sometimes and wish they'd do more. Also, when you lose that, that's something you realize that you know what they do. They do quite a bit, and I think that's where Tyler's at. What I like with our group of guys, the Sagans, the Bens, and stuff. You guys have heard me say this before. That it's now they're getting to the point in their careers now where it's about the wins and less about you know, like every young player. They, they want points. They want you know, they got contracts coming up. They're to that point in their career now where it's about the wins. And winning, and when you get enough players, that's what, where Joe Pavelski's at. That's where Ryan Suter's at. That's where Sagan and Ben are at. When you get enough of those players, Dad and off Domi, enough of those players that are in that situation where all that matters is winning, you're in a good place. I think that's where we're at with a bunch of these guys. I think that's real important. We haven't asked you yet. How do you feel about being a finalist for GM of the Year? And I know you always say it's a team award, and Seems like ten years in the making as well. Is that like? Do you take some pride in that? No, I take a lot of pride. You know, I, I take pride in our, in our organization. Yeah, it, it's I'm the one that's been nominated for it, but it, it's a reflection on the organization. It's the people I got around me that I've surrounded myself with. Doing the, they're doing the heavy lifting. Uh, it's the coaches. It's the players playing well. Um, it, it's my scouting staff doing a good job. It's my hockey operations department doing a good job. It, it's it's an organizational thing. So. I'm the one that, you know, got nominated for it, but it, it's really an ordinational thing. So, so I'm happy for the organization. How do you feel about the group of kids that this organization has produced? These are homegrown players who are trending into some of the best players in the NHL. I mean, the, the process to get them there is pretty impressive. No, our, our staff's done a great job. You know, I've, I've told everybody we were getting to that point and there's that, that, that word called rebuild. And... It's easy to say, okay, you're going to rebuild and do it, but when you start doing that for seven, eight, nine, ten years, it gets to be a grind. And uh, we're very fortunate we didn't have to go through that. You know, the ten years I've been here, I came here when it was kind of already started to rebuild, and we got it going right away. And we managed to. There's some rocky roads. There's always going to be. It's competitive business uh, and competitive league. You, you know, miss the playoffs here, there once in a while, but we've never had to take a big dip. And this. What our staff has done here the last two, three years with their drafts and free agent signings, it's put our organization in a good spot. Going into the draft, just what is your what is your mindset? I, last year, it seemed like you guys really had a position in mind, addressed that position really throughout the entire draft. What, what's the mindset kind of going into this one? Well, we know first we're picking 61 in the second. You know, if there's somebody there, can we move up or we'll wait and see if we can or not. But if we're just going to really take the best. When you get down to the second round, uh, six, you're take, trying to get the best player you can. And that's what we'll do. Jim, I, I know you're not going to tip your hand, but you mentioned how thin the market looks right now in some areas. 
does that force you to be more proactive, whether it's at the draft or in the near future, to try and make your improvements? Or how does that sort of affect you as a GM? I guess. Well, we'll 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 see what goes. They, uh, I get ideas, but I've got. 31 other teams that might not agree with my idea, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Um, uh, we'll see what's out there for free agency. Uh, what's the what's the money? You know, in the end, it's the cap hit that comes into play. So we're everything's on the table. Let's see where we're at. The good thing is, I know we got a lot of internal options. I get bad. This this is almost a repeat of last year's thing. I, you know, I told you guys. I think we got a group coming in. I was honest with you. I didn't. I didn't know how it was going to gel. You, you, you got this big game plan and you think it's going to gel together. It gelled. We had one of the best dress rooms I've seen in a long time. It came together. They played like they cared for each other. Now we got some more guys coming in. You know, I talked about Thomas Harley coming in. Mills Link was taking that next step. Uh, you know, we got some younger players, the Borks, the Stan Covens, Carl Shums, other guys, kids knocking on the door. Let's see where that all comes together. Let's see how it matches. But we know overall, um, we, we got the, the base, the foundation is there. Let's add to it the best we can. Is it external options? Is it through a trade or free agency? Or is it somebody coming in from within? Well, let's see where it goes. With uh, with Maverick, is that, uh, where are you at with his progress? Are you happy with where he's, where, you know, it, it sounded like he had a little bit of a tough start in the AHL and then uh, kind of picked up steam. How do, how do you kind of view this? Yeah, he's, you know, we got development camp coming up here in, uh, right after the draft three weeks. and. I, when I sit down with the young guys, my first day I talk about what's the biggest step you're ever going to make. It's going to be from junior college or Europe to the American Hockey League. And Maverick lived it. And uh, you know, I met with him after your end here and stuff, and he said, yeah, he was shocked. You know, you go from playing in junior, you're playing 30 minutes a night, you're the top dog, you're on every power play, every penalty kill, playing every second shift and scoring a will to now also you come to the American League and there's a bunch of other Maverick Borks that are in the same position and some guys that are 20, 29, 30 years old and they don't care where you were drafted. It's it's a learning thing. But he came back in December and he took right off and we're very happy with his uh, development. He, he was, you know, we had some, I talked about those game time decision players. He was one of the guys going in if we had to make some decisions. He, he, was, he was a possible player. So that just shows where he took his game to. How tight are you to the cap already, and can do you need to leave a million dollars or so so you don't have to do those ups and downs like you did last year? Yeah, well, we're tight to the cap. We're going to have four to four and a half million dollars to play with with leaving a cushion. Uh, you want to leave a cushion for call ups, and you want to leave a cushion so that we get to March again, and you guys come yeah. come after me to make mm -hmm. a big trade. I know I can make a big trade. I'm going to have cap room to do it. So it's. Uh, you know, you, you want to leave a million, million and a half cap room. Right now where we sit, we got four, four and a half million dollars to, to play with for four positions. Is there a difference between this past year where you were trying to save every little bit you could, and it did pay off in the end as far as having another call-up space versus when you're in LTIR and yeah. how that season goes? Yeah, you, you guys, you saw us. We were sending players up and down all the time. That was... Every time you do that, that saves you, that adds to your cap. And it, it really saved us this year. We, you know, we had performance bonuses and uh, quite a few. And actually we got that trimmed down because we had enough cap room. Because that affects, this year we got about $375,000 that comes off our cap uh, because of performance bonuses. That was a higher number. So you're 83.5, the cap hit, if that is it, we'll find out here the next week or so. All of a sudden you're down to 83 million. And if you had, more it might be 82 and a half so uh, that comes into play the bonuses but that's why we were you saw the shuttle austin to dallas and you see every team does it it's we we're just trying to keep gaining gaining it's the only reason we could do the dad enough and the um, domi trades the only reason we could do that it how, worked out how much do you also take into account pavelski's performance bonus for the following season and trying to fit that under next year's cap as much as possible so it doesn't have to that's, that's why the more we can leave, the, the better off we are. It starts to accumulate, and uh, it's like a bank account gains interest. And just, just keep. I mean, that's what's. Those are the bonuses we have this year is Pavelski's, uh, and next year he's got even more. So we'll have to monitor that. Anything else? Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody, and uh, thanks for supporting us. And uh, everybody have a good summer. We'll go from there. Sound good. Thank you. Thank yep, you. Thanks. Yeah, no, no.